Hey Jess. Yeah. Hey Jess. 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 Yeah. Jess. Hey, how are you? Fine. How are you? So I guess we're uh, going virtual again. I know. This week. Yep. Gonna be virtual. Another day of uh, all really the... exciting announcements. Really, the announcements are always good. I another another Sunday of preaching to a camera. Yeah. I always say this is always a, a televangelist face. Yeah, I think, I mean, that's probably why we have such a great big building now. Mm -hmm. it's cause yeah. We, yeah. Well, I don't have my jet. Well, yeah. Well, uh, maybe yeah. not. Maybe you don't not. have to wear masks on your jet. <laughs> hey, uh, this is a serious question. Though. Yeah. Uh, do you think people laugh at my jokes virtually? Uh, well, do they laugh at your jokes when you tell them in person? Uh, that's... That's a, that's a good point. I think, good point. I think the virtual side might be a little bit more laughing at than laughing with. <laughs> it's true. It's true. Well, hey, Thanksgiving is this week. I don't think it's going to be as normal as usual. Yeah, I don't know I don't uh, either. Know. But I, I'm still thankful, but ask me after. That's true. That, I'm, I'll probably still eat carbs. Oh, yeah. I, I initially thought that, well, now I'll not put on any weight. But I right. feel like that might... I don't think that's good. Now, instead of thankful eating, we'll just be stress eating. That's true. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. Eh, whatever. Anyway, hey everybody, live from the branch's office. It's virtual church! Woo! Good morning, friends. My name is Jess Munn, and welcome to the Branches Virtual Worship Service. I have a couple of announcements for us before we dive into worship. And the first is that if you are joining us at the Branches for the first time, um, we would love if you would fill out our digital connection card. This card will give us the information that we need to continue to connect with you and keep you connected into the life of the Branches. This connection card is also for you if any of your information that we might have has changed recently. So your address or your email address or phone number. So please take a moment. You can find that digital connection card in this post if you're watching on Facebook, as well as on our website, IamTheBranches.com. There's also a spot at the bottom of that card where you can leave us any prayer requests that you have at this time. And if you have prayer requests, but you don't need to fill out the entire card, there is a special prayer request form that, again, can be found in this post if you're watching on Facebook, as well as on our website up in the menu bar in the top right corner. So, I have a couple of announcements. We are getting ready to enter into the Advent season, which is the countdown to Christmas. And this year, we have had lots of people contribute to a 2020 Branches Christmas Advent devotional. And it's going to be very exciting this year because we also have a video component of the devotion where everyone who contributed made a video and those are going to get posted each day during the season of Advent. Advent starts on November 29th, so next Sunday, and we have sent out these devotionals to you. So, if you don't receive a Branches Advent devotional by November 29th and you would like one to follow along with, please go to our digital connection card, make sure you put in your name and your address, and then select the checkbox for, I need a Branches Advent devotional. And that way we can get one sent to you as soon as possible. This Advent devotion is going to be a great way for us to stay connected in this Advent season while we are still um, maintaining um, some distance for, for, um, for the season. So. Please let us know if we can still get you one of those devotionals. Another exciting opportunity that we as a church have going into this Christmas season is our Branches Giving Tree. Normally what we do is have a little Christmas tree with tags that you can choose um, presents to give to families in need. This year, we won't have a physical tree, but we do have a digital sign up where there are 83 gifts that we have agreed to and offered to supply to families and children in need this season. So 
That sign up is posted here in this link if you're watching on Facebook. And we will begin collecting the wrapped gifts the week of November 30th. More information on how we will be collecting those gifts will come soon. But what you need to know now is that you can follow that link, sign up for your gift, wrap it, and then you just put the gift number um, somewhere on the package on the bottom or, or however. That way we know who it needs to go to. And we are so excited um, um, to be able to still do our giving tree this year. So if you have any questions, be sure to comment on this post on Facebook or let us know somehow. Feel free to share this sign up um, with your friends or family who are looking for ways to give back this season. Before we enter into this worship service, I just want to share that this year going into Thanksgiving, I am very thankful for an opportunity that I have had to lead a Bible study of, of some of our college girls from the branches. And it has been over Zoom as they're all over the place um, in Indiana and Ohio, uh, but it has truly shown me ways that God has been working in my life um, and, and in there. So it's been a real blessing and I am, I'm very thankful um, going into this Thanksgiving season. I'm thankful for our health. And I'm thankful for our family. We are thankful for our family. We are thankful for our branches family. Happy, Happy Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving from, from the, the rashes. rashes. I'm thankful for students. Hi, this is the DeForce. Rex, what are you thankful for? Thank you for my dinosaur toys. Eli, what are you thankful for? Bye, 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 bye. For firefighters. I'm thankful for our health. I'm thankful for this family and sweet potato casserole. I am thankful for golf. I am thankful for the sunshine and the beautiful weather that we've had all week. Um, prime example, look at that sun. Hello, I'm Alex and this is Evan and we are so thankful for you. So would you please sing with us as we worship. at the fall running away when I'd hear you call but father you were pure I had no righteousness of my own I had no right to draw near your throne but father you loved me still. and in love before you laid the world's foundation you predestined to adopt me as your own. You have raised me up so high above my station. I'm a child of God by grace and grace alone. out the lost you knew the great and terrible cost Jesus your face was I worked my fingers down to the bone nothing I did could ever atone but Jesus you paid my debt and in love before you laid the world's foundation you predestined to adopt me as your own. You have raised me up so high above my station. I'm a child of God by grace and grace alone. I was in darkness all of my life. I never knew the day from the night. The spirit you made me. Well, I knew the way on my own 
had fallen a rock, a heart made of stone. The spirit you moved in me. At your touch, my sleeping spirit was awakened. On my darkened heart, the light of Christ has shone. Called into a kingdom that cannot be shaken. Heaven's citizen by grace and grace alone. So I'll stand in faith by grace and grace alone. I will run the race by grace and grace alone. I will slay my sin by grace and grace alone. I will reach the end by grace and grace alone. Hello, my name is Alex Hershey, and I am the pastor of The Branches, and I am glad that you are watching right now. And I just want to say, I am thankful for my family and my friends and The Branches Church. And I'm ultimately thankful for the grace that Jesus has given to me that has allowed me to experience forgiveness and be transformed and changed into something I never could have thought I could be. And I am grateful for Christ's amazing love for me. Uh, this week is the week of Thanksgiving, and it is not normal. It is not. It's going to be a different week for many of us, even for those who may think that everything can be the same. It is just not. And I just want to say, it's okay to cry this week. I also want to say, it's okay to laugh too, just because things are different. Maybe you're not with the people that you're normally with. It's okay to have a good time. Uh, I just want to say that in this season right now that we find ourselves in, God is still at work. And even in the midst of all the changes that we have had this year, we can still find things where we can be thankful for what God has done. We can still give thanks to the God who loves us and cares for us. Would you pray, for, pray with me as we jump into our message today? Would you pray? Lord, thank you so much that you are good and your love endures forever. We thank you for your peace and your amazing grace. We thank you for being a God who made us and desires to have a relationship with us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, since this is the beginning of Thanksgiving week and we're doing virtual church again, I want to have some fun here. And so drop it in the comments on Facebook or, or whatever. Drop some emojis of what your favorite food is. Could it be the turkey? Could it be the green bean casserole? Could it be a uh, pie? Oh, mashed potatoes. Oh, I don't know what it is, but drop it with emojis or comment or emojis or, or whatever in the comments. Tell me what your favorite Thanksgiving food is. Maybe for some of you, it's nachos. I don't know, but uh, let me know what your favorite food is. I know for me, I could eat a bowl a platter of green bean casserole. Oh, I love it so, so much. <laughs> oh, well, I just want to say thank you for watching today and uh, thank you for staying connected. I truly desire for you to, to take this time and be able to connect and understanding what God is doing in your life. When we take moments and allow for God to speak to us, we begin to see our lives transformed and change. Three things that I want to challenge you to do in this season right now, and that is every week, I want you to read Scripture. I want you to get your Bibles out, and I want you to read Scripture. I want you to pray. I want you to pray to God. Uh, and I want you then, the third thing is to extend Christ's love to someone. If you could strive to do those three things every week, I, I truly believe that you will be able to experience God at work in your life. And uh, what a beautiful thing that is. Well, there are times in life that it can be really hard to be kind. It just is. Now, when I first started in ministry, I was 24 years old, and I was pastoring this church in rural Kentucky, in the hills. And it was a small little country church in the middle of nowhere. The place was literally called Nunsuch, because there was none such a place. 
And every month, once a month, we would have a potluck. And so everybody would bring their favorite dishes. And, and after church, we'd go down to the church basement and we would have a feast. And it was some of the best food I've ever had. It was a good time. Now, this was not a large church, so everybody knew what everybody else brought, all right? So the stakes were high. You had to know who brought what, and you had to, as the young pastor at that time, be able to compliment each person about what they brought. This is true. I'm not making this up. And we had a family that had just started coming and uh, they wanted to join in on the potluck, and so they brought a meal, and I was so excited that they were there, and uh, and they brought this meal, and, and like I said, you knew what everybody brought, and uh, I, w- I went through the line, and I learned really quick that whatever you put on your plate, you better eat, because people are watching, and if you don't eat everything on your plate, they will be offended. Oh, yes, they will. Okay. Oh, yeah. Really good. Anyway, but this late, there's this... this we could always have at every one of these a whole card table filled with cornbread. All right. I like cornbread, but anyway, here it is. And so I remember I went through the line. I was like, this looks new. And so I picked up some of the cornbread and I put it on my plate. And then I went and I sat with that new family. And as I sat with that family, she, she said, I made that cornbread. And as she said that, I said, well, well, let me, I probably should take a bite. And so I pick up this cornbread, and I put it in my mouth. And as it hits my tongue, the taste buds in my mouth say, this does not taste like normal cornbread. Then the taste buds in my mouth say, if you would ever put cigarette ash in your mouth, this is probably what it would taste like. Ah, oh my goodness. Yes, in that moment I put that cornbread in, it tasted nasty. It tasted so, so bad. And oh my goodness, in that moment, I realized too that I could not spit out this cornbread. And so I finished it. The second thing, as I was finishing and swallowing this down, I realized the person who made this cornbread is sitting right across from me. And I have to finish this cornbread that is on my plate. There are times in life where it is hard to be kind. It is hard to be kind. I have heard the phrase, killing them with kindness before, but in this moment, I was thinking that my kindness might be killing me. (laughs) I finished the cornbread. Well, this month, we have been looking at how we can live step by step with God by looking at the fruits of the Spirit that we find in Galatians 5, 22 through 23. Let me just see, say this verse again so you know what the fruits of the Spirit are. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Today, we're going to be looking at kindness. To me, this is absolutely huge today. This is a big one. Kindness, I believe, has become a forgotten art form. Where it seemed when we were children, or maybe generations ago, I don't know, and we would hear this said to us time and time again from preschool teachers to elementary teachers to middle school and high school teachers and maybe even college professors, where they would say, if you can't say anything nice, Don't say anything at all. If you can't say anything kind, don't say anything at all. Today, I believe we are living in a time where we think this way. It's on my mind, so I better say it because I deserve to be able to say it. Kindness is becoming a lost art form. We, uh, through this series over the last two weeks, we've looked back into Old Testament characters. But today, as I talk about kindness, I'm just going to talk about a story with Jesus. Jesus, I believe, is the ultimate picture of kindness. He had moments where he could be unkind, and he chose to be kind instead. And even in the moments where Jesus is so direct with people, even in the moments where Jesus is turning tables, we begin to see that Really, when you look at the root of why he was doing what he was doing, it was because it was out of kindness. So today I want to read a famous story, I believe, because when I was a kid, I learned a song about this guy, and that he was short, power to the short people. What? Anyway, and he was short. And it's a story of Zacchaeus. 
Someone who no one else in the community looked at with kindness. And it was because Zacchaeus was cho- had chosen to be a tax collector. He had been chosen to be in a profession that doesn't have a lot of respect at that time. And yet no one would come to him and give him kindness. But here we see in this awesome story, Jesus choosing kindness. And see what happens in this line, in this story. So I encourage you, if you're sitting at home, to grab your Bibles every time you sit down, or if you're on, if you're driving right now, or whatever you're doing, if you can, grab your Bibles and follow along. Here's 10 verses in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 19, and it says this, chapter, Luke chapter 19, 1 through 10. He entered, it means Jesus entered. Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through it. A man was there named Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and was rich. He was trying to see who Jesus was, but on account of the crowd, he could not, because he was short in stature. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore tree to see him, because he was going to pass that way. When Jesus came to the place, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, hurry and come down, for I must stay at your house today. So he hurried down and was happy to welcome him. All who saw it began to grumble and said, He has gone to the guest of one who is a sinner. Zacchaeus stood there and said to the Lord, Look, half of my possessions, Lord, I will give to the poor. And if I have defrauded anyone of anything, I will pay back four times as much. Then Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, because he too is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek out and to save the lost. Oh, this is such a good story that we find where Jesus entering into a town where there's the, the, the excitement is surrounding Jesus now. He enters in and everybody wants to see him. And, and, and I know this trick. I go to many places and I have to find high ground if I want to see things. And so Zacchaeus, he heads to the high ground. He heads to the sycamore tree. He climbs up. And I love this. Jesus knows him by name. Jesus knows you by name. And the thing is, is that as Jesus identifies him, he says, I'm going to be a guest at your house. Get down from that. Let's go have a dinner party together. You know, the rest of everybody around is just shocked because they're saying, why is Jesus choosing to be kind to this person? Why is Jesus choosing to extend his time and spend it with someone who is a known sinner? The question that we can ask ourselves is this. Would I go and spend my evening with an ex-convict or someone who I know that has not been up to anything good? Am I going to always evaluate people by their past wrongs instead of seeing what God can transform them into? You see, it's a mentality that we can get, and it actually is something where we begin to see that we stop being kind because of a stereotype or because of a past action of somebody. Jesus walks through this town, identifies the person who everyone else knows has done wrong in their past, but Jesus sees what can be made right in his future. And he does this out of kindness. This is powerful for us to truly begin to understand. Jesus gives us this beautiful picture of what kindness can look like. Instead of being people who are grumbling, that's what he says says here, instead of being people who are grumbling, let us be people filled with kindness. Let us be people who don't care if people will only look at their past but we become people who see how God is at work and will draw them forward. Kindness is powerful. You know, kindness in the list of the fruits of the Spirit, it's the fifth fruit of the Spirit. I know I'm going haphazardly through the fruits of the Spirit, uh, but we see that in this time, it is the Holy Spirit that really can rain down upon us that allows for us to have a sympathetic kindness In our life, this is a virtue that God is blessing us with. That we are able to be people who can seek out those who are in need. Seek out people who are hurting and use this quality of God's kindness to breathe life upon them. 
Now, just as Zacchaeus experienced Jesus' kindness, it brought to him, it says, it brought to him salvation. He is changed because we are reminded that Jesus comes to seek the lost and to bring them into connection with God the Father. How powerful is this? If we then put on the same kindness that Christ has extended to us, if we do this, then we can, in a world that can be filled with anger, in a world that can be filled with selflessness, we can then become people who seek out how to cultivate the fruit of kindness in our lives and in the lives around us. Wow, that's powerful. Just as Jesus extended kindness and brought salvation, Jesus, I believe, is telling you that if you put on kindness, you will cultivate a spirit of salvation in other people's lives. Wow, this is powerful. John Wesley, I know I quote him a lot. I have a mug with his name on it. Hmm, coffee, yum. John Leslie says this, he says, All worldly joys are less than that one of joy of doing kindness. <laughs> Being kind is important in the eyes of God. God doesn't care if you win arguments. God doesn't care if you are a stubborn mule. God wants you to be a person who is kind and loving. This is powerful. So I want to go back to this. How do we cultivate the kindness of Jesus in our lives? Cultivate the kindness of Jesus in our lives. Now, uh, this past spring, we did a garden again. We made a raised garden bed. And, and in the past, uh, a long time ago, uh, we used to have gardens quite a bit. And I loved to till the ground and prepare everything. And what was interesting was that I had to remind myself that this year's crop, because it's the first time I haven't done it in a long time, uh, even though I cultivated the soil and took care of things, it wasn't going to be a bountiful harvest. Because I remember in the past when I started the garden, it took several years before I knew what to do, where to put things, and, and how to, to just work with the ground, and put, put compost in it, and do all these things, and it would cultivate this great garden. I just want to say, as we begin to figure out and learn how to cultivate the kindness of Jesus in our lives, it isn't something that just is a snap, and all of a sudden we are the kindest people alive, and we're just like, oh, I'm so kind. No, but this is the thing, is that it takes time, and we have to do what was supposed to, we've got to go step by step, cultivating how we can be kind in all situations and in all moments. You know, uh, I truly believe that we see, when we work at this, that we begin to see that kindness takes hold of us, and it begins to allow for us to have these different relationships with people around us. I think that we don't choose to be kind anymore out of fear or that maybe that we'll get something in return, but we genuinely, genuinely have a new boldness of being kind because the Holy Spirit has filled us and is leading us this way. Because surely we do not want to be people that come across as superficial kind people, right? I don't like to be around that. You don't like to be around that. We don't like fake kind people. We want to be genuine in our kindness. So I want to go over four things here that can help us be uh, able to cultivate kindness in our lives. And the first one is this. We need to pray for a clean heart. What do I mean by that? I mean, we need to make sure that we are self-aware of how and why we are being kind. We need to recognize this. Are we just being sweet on the superficial level, or are we being genuine in how we are kind? So we have to pray for a clean heart and our kindness. Proverbs 3.3 3 says, Do not let kindness and truth leave you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. Allow for kindness to be written on your heart. Let your heart hold on to Jesus. The second thing is this. Ask, ask what is the motivation to show kindness? I'm learning that if I just ask <clears throat> ask people, if I just start being kind, I've got to check 
What is my motivation for being happy? Am I trying to get someone to approve of me or am I afraid of disappointing someone and, and it just comes off the wrong way? I want the kindness that Jesus has, which is bold, saying, get down from that tree. I'm going to be kind to you today. I'm going to be courageous with my kindness. I am not going to be fearful or timid. I am going to be kind. Ephesians 4.32 just says, be kind to one another. This is what I want my motivation to be. So ask, what is your motivation in showing kindness? The third thing is this, believe the power of true kindness. As we look at the story of Zacchaeus, Jesus was kind, and in that moment, just by recognizing Zacchaeus, just by recognizing Zacchaeus, all of a sudden, Zacchaeus' life is transformed and changed. I truly believe that if we don't believe that our kindness matters, we will lose our kindness. We will not let people go in front of us. We will not open doors anymore. But when we see that the value of our kindness can point people to Jesus, then we will be pursuers of kindness in all things. In all things. The fourth and final thing is this. Replace fake kindness with, with Christ kindness. Christ kindness. Breathe just... Inhale the Spirit of God and exhale out His kindness. Allow for Christ to fill you up with great kindness. Now, this is something that I truly believe right now, that we, and living step by step for Jesus, it means that we will then have a genuine and authentic kindness, which leads to a genuine and authentic faith. And that we will begin to cultivate Christ's kindness in your life and live daily with Christ. And you will bring others to Jesus in how you live. Let the Lord use you to show kindness to others. God, watch over us. Guide us and lead us. Let us be people who are kind. Cultivate, us, cultivate in us this spirit of kindness to all. And let us bring on Christ's kindness, so others will be transformed and changed by your amazing love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Guys, have a great Thanksgiving. I'll see you soon. Bye.